Imagine you come across an existing code base and you see some code like this. Wouldn't you wish there had been a guard police to report the missing guards back when the code was written? Here's an idea for a simple code analyzer which you could use to establish such a guard corp in your projects. Also, make sure to watch until the end so you don't miss the code fixer which will remove any last excuse for not having proper guards. We will start by creating a new project, targeting .NET Standard, making sure the analyzer can be used in any project. We also need to add the required code analyzers packages. The first two are essential for creating any code analyzer. The third one will be needed by the code fixer. The basic setup of a code analyzer looks like this. We define a rule that includes a diagnostic ID, a title, a message format, a category and a severity level. Next we override the initialize method to register a syntax node action for the constructor declarations. When our action gets called by the Roslyn compiler framework, we analyze all constructor parameters and report a diagnostic for each parameter that doesn't have a guard statement. If we integrate this analyzer in a sample project, we will see constructor parameters without guards highlighted and a tooltip showing our warning message. Awesome, right? But of course you have probably already realized I left out an important detail. How exactly does the analyzer detect missing guards? In my projects, I like to use my own simple utility for design by contract. It's lightweight and keeps third party libraries out of my project's domain and application logic. For this reason, and to keep things simple for this tutorial, the analyzer only support guards following the same naming conventions. The basic idea is to identify all statements that invoke methods starting with requires on a class called contract and then verify if a given parameter is part of such a statement. While these warnings certainly help to reduce the chances of missed guards in the future, we can go one step further. With a small change to our project files, we can turn this warning into an error, making this rule even stricter. But to make this approach more acceptable to teams, we will provide a code fixer. Here's how we will do this. The basic setup of a code fixer looks like this. We start by configuring the diagnostic ID of our analyzer as fixable by this code fixer. Then we override the method register code fixes async to register a code action for each diagnostic provided through the code fix context. When our action is called by the Roslyn compiler framework, we search for the related constructor, extract the existing guard statements and identify any remaining constructor statements. We then create and add a guard statement for the parameter flagged by the diagnostic and even ensure the guards are sorted according to the parameter order in the constructor. Finally, we recreate the constructor body, adding a blank line between the block of guards and the rest of the constructor code. If you are curious about the implementation details for each step, you will find a link to the source code in the video description. At this point, I only want to highlight that this approach even allows us to generate guards specific to certain parameter types. When we test the code fixer in our sample project, we can see it appears in the available quick fixes. When we apply the fix for each parameter, we see the respective guards being created and sorted just as expected. But what if a constructor accepts an optional parameter that doesn't need a guard? Instead of suppressing the rule, we could simply make it clear that no guard is needed by introducing a guard API like this. Now imagine the constructor had three parameters from the start. That would mean applying the code fixer three times. Can we support a fix all quick fix? It turns out code fixer can provide this by overriding the get fix all provider method. Unfortunately, in my experiments, the built in batch fixer didn't work, so we need to implement our own solution. Luckily, this isn't rocket science either. We simply derive from the fix all provider class, define the fix all scope we want to support, and override the get fix async method to provide the fixes for the requested scope. The simplest implementation is to loop through all diagnostics and apply our constructor guard fixer. In our sample project, we can now select the fix all quick fix, choose a scope, and watch the guards being added for all the parameters in the correct order. Some manual fine tuning may still be required, but the initial guard setup is now almost for free. This hopefully ensures that guards are never skipped in our projects again. Of course, this code analyzer and fixer are pretty basic right now. For example, it doesn't yet support primitive types or structs, and it could be extended to support all methods, not just constructors. However, improving this code is straightforward especially using test-driven development, since writing tests is simple 
with the test packages provided by Microsoft. Now tell me, which approach would you prefer in your projects? The GuardCorp or the approach proposed in this video?